Hey there, and welcome to The Crust. My name is Stealth, I'm gonna talk you through part of how to set up your first base. The first building blocks, what do you need? The tutorial explains a bit of this, but I found it somewhat a cluster, so I decided to add this video to it. Now, for this particular sandbox playthrough, I'm gonna go for a partial compensation, giving you a decent amount of credits, a bit of supply, a bit of research, nice to have. So that's our starting position, and with that you can immediately drop down a couple of cargo pods, giving you all sorts of useful resources. Now this of course is going to last you a while, but not very long. We're going to have to do a bit of base building, and that's exactly what the game is about. You have essentially two levels, which is the surface level. This is where you can deploy a bunch of buildings, and initially we're just going to deploy a couple of solar panels and some batteries. That's all that we need. We need to be able to generate some juice so that down below in the depths of the crust we can start harvesting. So I'm going to set up a couple of batteries and a couple of solar panels. I found that 3x2 works quite well for the short run. It might be tempting to deploy a whole lot. Like going for uh, tons and tons and tons of solar panels because you're going, well, I'm rich, I have a lot of resources. Well, depending on the start that you've chosen, you don't you're going to have to pick and choose what you build with the level of steel, smart concrete, and silicon that you have been given. You really don't have that much, so don't overspend. You don't need all of it yet. Be sure to wire all of these things up using the utility tools, and this way you have your first little setup complete. This way I have a little bit of power. I can store this power in the batteries if I have an excess during the day, and that way during the nighttime I'm going to have a bit of excess power to keep the base running. It is very important that you do have batteries because, of course, the nights on the moon, they tend to take a while. So be sure to be ready for that. Once I have this little setup on the surface, I'm going to hit tab and go down into the crust. This is the lower level, and this is where you're going to do all of your mining. The mining is pretty straightforward. We have to convert a couple of our 10 bots into actual mining vehicles. In order to do that, we're going to have to set up a drone reconfiguration module. We have the resources for it, but you can see that this building does take up 12 of your smart bricks. And our bricks are already decreasing somewhat quickly. Now I'm going to deploy this thing fairly close to the entrance. And of course, if you don't need it here, you can always relocate it later. That's one thing I want. The other thing I want is a charging station so that my drones immediately get charged up the moment that they need additional power. I'm going to put that over there. I'm going to add one little utility mast to it, a utility pole. This is uh, more so that I can immediately start building a logistics network, a power network. Now that the logistics is already being delivered, the resources are coming up. I'm going to speed this up a little so that we have the first building up. This thing is not yet powered. And the game is protesting that it doesn't have any powers because the power pole, the utility pole, is still being built. So sometimes you might go, hey, why am I not getting any power? This can be why. I'm going to add a couple of the units. Um, there we go. Now that it has power, you can start converting some of your bots. I have converted five out of my five bots so that I have the mining capacity. Now, this is the start. Of course, we're not really going to be able to do much because the buildings that you have are limited. I might be able to do drone reconfiguration and I'm going to have to do a lot of manual mining, but that's not exactly what we're going for. We want to automate as much as possible. For that, we'll need a few buildings, and in order to get those, you're going to go into the research tree. Disregard social for the time being, you don't need it. What we do need is regolith processing. Regolith is the first bit that you can find everywhere. If I start sending my drones to do some excavation, and I tend to just dig out a bunch over here so that I have a little area to build and to work with, you can see that the drones immediately are going to swoop in and start mining everything. Once they break stuff down, what they leave behind is regolith. This regolith can get turned into all sorts of useful materials. Initially, your efficiency is going to be pretty low. But later on, you'll actually be able to do a bit more efficient processing. You might also come up against these, uh, let's say, colored rock walls. This is hard rock and you cannot actually mine into this yet. In order to do that, you're going to need more research. So unfortunately, you're going to have to just kind of excavate around it. The game is protesting that I'm wasting research points. And that's because you have these three different research tech trees. Um, they can get researched at the same time. 
So ideally, you want to have one that also, uh, for example, spends a bit of research on uh, the blue tech tree, the fundamental one. It's not one that you really need urgently. Um, the landing platform is something that the game is going to prompt you to get, but right now I don't really feel like it's a priority. The drone upgrade oxide mining might indeed be much more useful. Increases the resource extraction speed of drones mining directly from a vein by 25%. This is going to be useful later. Uh, excavation speed is also going to be useful later, so let's queue that up. But I'm really waiting for this first bit of regolith processing to complete. Now the drones are going to just drop everything behind them. They don't really have a purpose with this regolith. So right now we're just going to have a bit of a, a cluttered base. And there is the option to go for a storage facility, a bulk storage unit. Don't fall for this trap. This is not something you need. And if you build this, you might not be able to build the rest of your facilities. And you'll find that your colony is going to come grinding to a halt before it's even begun. A general storage is a lot cheaper. It is, however, not capable of getting connected by conveyors. And that is unfortunate because we want to start automating, at least later on. So for now, we're going to have to wait. Thankfully, though, we do now have regolith processing done. And with that, I have unlocked the, the pressing module. This takes five regolith and turns it into one smart brick, smart concrete. Um, seeing as I don't really have a clear setup for the base yet, I'm just going to plunk this down pretty much in the middle. The only things that you want to be paying attention to is where the entrance point is and where the exit point is. Because that is going to tie into where you might be able to point your facilities in the future. How are you going to connect these using conveyors? Now, I try to keep at least, let's say, three bricks or three uh, squares between each facility so that I can run some conveyors. You can even run more, and eventually you'll be able to unlock research to allow this thing to go underneath your facilities. But we're not quite there yet. First, I need this in order to start building more smart concrete. Now, at this point, the drones are going to have to bring in the resources from the surface, and this takes four, oh, sorry, six of your steel. Um, and you can see that my steel is running out. You only have 18. It's not a whole lot. And this is why I said don't spend all your steel on solar panels. In the research tree, we now have the access to regolith processing done. And the next thing we're going to get is the smelting furnace and the geophysical prospecting. This is basically an ore detector. Uh, you build it, you scan everything around you, and you know where to start looking for stuff. I also want to queue up the conveyor kit. And this is going to take only 1.6 days because of the amount of income in research that you have, which is 100. This is not infinite. It will run out. So be in, uh, a bit mindful about how fast you're going to be spending your research. Um, keep researching at all times and the game is going to recognize when you're not doing that and queue you up saying, hey, you're wasting research time. So get on that. Now, this facility is operational, and my drones are immediately bringing stuff in there, but it doesn't have any power yet. It might be very tempting to just go, oh, well, I got a power pole here, I can just hook it up, right? Yes, you can, certainly. However, what are you going to hook everything else up to? That's a bit of a problem. So I tend to go with a wire and set up another power pole, and this way I can connect it. This power pole or utility pole now has two more connectors for potential other buildings that are likely going to come up fairly soon. So one of my drones is going to go to the surface, get a little bit of steel, get a bit of smart concrete and start building up that power pole. The drones will start tossing as much regolith into this pressing module as they can. This is going to then start processing the regolith into these smart concrete blocks. So at least we have a little bit of production going on, but not much. In order to get more, we're going to have to get the geophysical prospecting thing. So I'm going to prioritize that one over everything else because I need to know where the rest of my resources are going to have to go. So I'm going to skip ahead to the point where that research is done. A few minutes later, I have researched the ore detector. This is going to, again, take you a bit of your steel, your precious steel that you're not actually making yourself yet. But that's about to change. What I'm going to do is deploy this thing in a facility or in a spot where it probably doesn't take up too much room. Um, let's just put it over, yeah, over here right now. Again, you can either demolish and rebuild it later, 
or just demolish it if you find that it is in a spot where you actually want to start building something else. Keep in mind, this will also need power. And this again is why I built that power pole in a slightly convenient location so I can pretty quickly hook this thing up. Now, this thing is ready, but there is something you need to know. It takes quite a bit of charge. The minimum charge is 10,000 points of energy. Right now, what I have stored up is 169,000. The minimum charge, um, for example, is this. So it's going to scan almost nothing. What I want is for this thing to be able to scan quite a bit. Now you can scan either fairly wide or the longer you go, it's going to turn into a very narrow scanning beam. But you can see that I might be able to see very far, but at a cost, that's 100,000 points of energy. And I am in nighttime, so I don't exactly generate much energy at the moment. I don't mind spending about 25 to 30k just looking around for my first bit of research, uh, sorry, resources, which is going to be iron. I'm going to send out a pulse. And there it is. We found both iron and titanium deposits. This is exactly what I need. The next part of the operation is going to be excavating that. So we're going to have to start digging around. And this is when it gets uh, very useful to turn on the high priority mode. You click Alt or you click the tool and the uh, thing turns into a different color so that the game knows, okay, this needs to get excavated right now. I'm going to do that for the iron, so the FE deposit, and the TI for titanium deposit. So we're going to carve a path into this. Now the only other resource that at the moment we don't actually have access to yet is silicon. You can sort of circumnavigate that, you can get around that at least for a while, but not very long. So we're going to have to scan again, and this way hopefully find a bit more. Because there has to be more out here. The question is where? I really hope it's not behind this uh, this hard rock because that would make it a bit more difficult to actually excavate it. Sometimes it takes a few search pings to actually get the resource. Sometimes you get an unlucky map generation. Such as this time. Unfortunately it is... Well, it might be a little farther away, but look at that. I'm spending quite a lot of my energy already. Ah, there's titanium again. Okay, well, so be it. We're going to have to find another way to get silicon. It's not necessarily the end of your playthrough, so don't worry about that. As for research, we already have this one coming up, the smelting furnace. We already have the conveyor belts coming up, and we're going to get more efficient oxide mining rates. This is going to come in useful later, after we get a bit more research done, because I need to be able to start turning that stuff into useful productivity. That's the smelting furnace. It turns oxides into metal ingots. It does that for all of your resources. So it does that for steel, for silicon, and for titanium, which is very convenient. Let me skip ahead to that point. A little while later, I have the research complete. Smelting furnace is done. The next thing I want is the underground mining, and thankfully it's a really cheap process. It's only 100 points of research, so it's going to complete in one day. I want this thing before I want the conveyor belts, and after that we can look at the excavation speed, but right now not that important. I want the underground mining and I also want the regolith refinery. The refinery does a very very useful job. It turns into uh, or it turns the regolith and extracts only one type of oxide from that. So for example it's going to take all the regolith that gets deposited from this iron deposit and it turns that into very good iron resource. In order to do that though I'm first going to have to get this underground mining building. This is where you can run a little low on resources. And this again is why I, at least in my own playthroughs, am very, very stingy on spending my stuff. Thankfully, a regolith extractor doesn't take a whole lot of resources. It takes the bricks, which we have, and takes four of the steel, which again, we have. Now I'm going to place this thing directly on top of it, and the game is going to go cells overlapped 9 out of 9. If I click here, 6 for 9, it doesn't do it. It has to be directly on there. So this thing is going to start extracting at a very, very good rate. But, as the game says, it does need energy. Now, during the nighttime, I ran out of power, so I did scan too much. And this means that I might be inclined to go for more power generation, but again, I don't have a source of steel yet. So as much as I would like that, I'm not going to do that just yet. Now, the next thing that this is going to go to is get the regolith 
and it's going to turn all, or sorry, it's going to mine everything and it's going to get regolith out of it. Very important to note is the regolith richness. What is actually in that dust that you're mining? It's mostly iron. It's 52% iron. So that is exactly why I deposited this regolith extractor directly onto the iron deposit. The game is protesting, hey, I'm not plugged in yet. Yeah, correct. You're not, because I'm waiting for the regolith refinery. I need this thing to get completed. Now, if you are not a patient person like myself, you can speed up the research. Right now, I'm getting 100 points of uh, standard engineering research per day, but you can increase that. Go over to logistics, uh, sorry, to cross solutions, get the science points, and uh, this way you can buy additional science point income per day. This does get increasingly expensive the faster you want them. So I'm going to say, um, yeah, I'm going to take 15k. Um, for note, I have 297,000, but that can run down pretty quick. Although right now uh, we should be fine. This is going to increase the rate at which you gather your research. So as such, oh crap, <laughs> I did the wrong one. Uh, my bad. Let's go for science points and get them for engineering. The one that I got was fundamental. Not exactly what I need. So fine, we'll, well, we'll get this a couple days. It's okay. Um, with that, the engineering research is going to speed up and the fundamental research is also going to speed up. So now it takes almost no time at all. This does, however, take some bit away from your budget, but that's something you can replenish later. So research done. Excellent. Now go to production. Sorry, go to mining and get a single regolith refinery. This is going to give you a couple of entry points and exit points. The entry point is where all the regolith goes into. And then you have one exit point, let's say to the top, one to the bottom. That's where the slag comes out, which is a bit of a, a waste resource. And you have one that actually excretes all the oxide that we have gathered. So let's say the more pure iron stuff. Again, I'm going to keep a couple of blocks between it to make sure that there's a bit of room. And now the conveyor belt system should get researched. Yeah, almost promptly. So my drones are going to build this again for a bit of steel. And we're running down to, I think we're going to be down to about five by the time that I'm done. Thankfully, that's the last bit that we'll need. Once this is done, there we go. Research complete. So that's the conveyor system. This thing now completes. What I want from this thing is to start getting iron oxide. Keep in mind, this is just the oxide. This is not actually the steel yet. We're going to have to get an additional building for that. First, we're going to have to hook this up. And thankfully, this one generally still has a bit of uh, connection points left. This can have 10 connection points. So I can loop one of these wires over here. And this way, it's going to have power. Now, what's going to happen is they might have power, but they're not connected yet. So that's what the conveyor belts do. This is the exit. This is the entry. Build all. It's going to cost you 1,500 of your credits. You say, yeah, that's fine. Director, and now, here we go. Director, um, I am situation? not going to go into the contract right now. So what's happening right now? The regolith extractor is getting the regolith. And it's going to churn that into the single regolith refinery. Which then comes up with a pretty decent extraction rate for the okay. iron oxide. But at the moment, we can't actually stash that anywhere. We can't use it yet. For that, the smelting furnace comes into play. Now, normally I'd set these up in a, a sort of row, but I'm already starting to run a little low on space. So I'm going to make this a slight angle. And that way I should be able to, at least for now, still have enough room if I want to improve my logistics later. Again, we're going to build a conveyor belt. Keep in mind the conveyor belt has to come from this one. This is the exit point for the regolith. Oh, sorry, for the oxide. This is for the slag which is a waste product that you don't want going into your production capacity. Unfortunately, I don't have enough bricks. I don't have enough smart concrete. And I turned off the uh, concrete production facility because I ran out of power. So now that I actually need it, um, we're going to have to turn it back on. Wait for that to complete. Note that all of these conveyor belts are now full with iron oxide. And this thing is getting a decent amount of production. It's getting a pretty good richness, and as such, it's churning out quite a nice amount of oxide. We just can't use it yet, up until such a point where the smelting furnace is complete. Once the smelting furnace is complete, you're going to, of course, have to hook this thing up to power. 
Make sure that you always keep some power points spare. It's just, uh, well, it's easier to go about it that way. Uh, let's just loop this thing here, connect this here. And you're going to have to tell this thing what you want to produce. I want steel. Once that's done, it immediately starts churning out uh, the steel that you want. And it's already getting a pretty big backlog of iron oxide that this thing has stored up. Now, this will run out pretty quick. But at least we have some basic production going on. Excellent. We got steel. And you can see that I'm, well, I'm down to five. But now that this thing is producing, there's a sort of uptrend in these bars. Which means that I'm actually getting more steel. We also have a module that needs repair. Um, and this thing needs steel to repair. So the steel income was not a moment too soon. Considering that all of this now needs additional power, I'm going to go back up to the surface. And once there, I'm going to build one additional solar panel and an additional battery. This way I should be able to keep everything going for at least a while longer. And yeah, that's not the most efficient way to go about it. I should have looped these things in slightly different, but whatever. Um, this way we're going to have a bit more power during the daytime and during the nighttime. But it does seem like we're not exactly generating enough power yet. Unfortunately, these solar panels are already... Well, they're kind of dying because the sun is going down. Or, well... <laughs> we're rotating away from the sun, if you want to be exact about it. So we're going to have to once again rely upon battery power. Over here, we also have access to the titanium deposit. So it's pretty much the same format here. You put a regolith extractor on there. You then throw on a single regolith refinery. And once you have that, and again, I'm running a little low on space. I'm going to put a smelting furnace in place, which I'll just turn around and hook everything up with the conveyor belt system. So one goes there, the end product. And this is where the game can get a little finicky at times because sometimes it doesn't exactly know what you want to do. There we go. <clears throat> Build all the conveyors. The drones are going to have a little bit of time building everything up. At the moment, I don't have nearly enough smart concrete to build all of this, but that's fine. I don't need titanium in an extreme hurry. I do need silicon. And sadly, I'm not getting that. What you can do is turn a whole setup from one part to another. And here's what I mean. I can have the regolith extractor just continue to gather resources. But I'm just getting silicon from it right now. Or sorry, I'm getting regolith from it right now. I can tell this one to start changing the output into silicium. This way it's going to go far, far, far less efficient. Simply because, well, the intake is pretty shit. The regolith doesn't contain a whole lot of silicon. And that means that it's going to have to get a lot more regolith in order to still have the output of enough silicon. Nevertheless, it will provide you with silicon oxide. Not a whole lot, but, well, it's something. And that way, you can just convert a whole production line into something else. This does mean that it'll dump whatever it had in storage... So right now, I'm just dumping a whole lot of the oxide from the iron oxide over there. But we are getting, albeit slowly, very, very, very low amounts of silicon. So this is a way that you can send a silicon production into gear if you absolutely have to. Right now, thankfully, I don't because, well, I'm doing pretty well on silicon. You don't use that much of an early game. At least not in these, these super early stages, so we should be fine. I'm going to turn this thing into, back into iron oxide. It'll probably dump a little bit out the side, but that's fine. So it dumped, what, one silicon, I think? Not to worry about it. Put this back to steel, and off we go. Now, apparently that one solar panel was not enough. Um, we are still bleeding power. <clears throat> it's not for 12 days. You might go, well, one day is a full cycle, right? Uh, no, not in this game. Your nighttime tends to last for, well, always longer than you want. Also, keep researching. Um, the ones that I recommend are the more efficient miner, so the extractor, and the single regolith upgrade. This is going to increase the processing speed. If you don't have that much intake, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. But if you do, then just not having a bottleneck over here can really help. If you are feeling adventurous, you can also go for the multi-regolith refinery, which is going to change your whole production process, but I'm not going into that in this video. Hard rock mining or hard rock drilling is going to be useful if you want to get rid of some of those buildings, or some of those, uh, let's say, blocks that I couldn't drill into yet. 
and they will give you rare earth minerals. Now that is how you can set up the first bit of production. If I were to continue this playthrough, I would activate the ore detector again and start looking for a silicon deposit. Just like I have done with the iron, just like I have done with the titanium, look for a silicon deposit and build, let's say, a similar sort of chain. Once you have these first buildings, of course, you can make it uh, more efficient, you can make it better, you can make it look better, you can make it run better. But all of that is a bit more of a later game concern. Hope you found the video useful. If you did, please hit the like button. That way more people can find it. If you have any questions, please post those down below. And if you haven't seen the game yet at all, and you're going, what is this? Um, the, the link to the game is down below in the description. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for more videos.